Hey guys, John here. Today we're in Arturia Pigments 4, and to wrap up the Resonance Week and kind of gently push us into the weekend, we have this patch here called Mystical Lo-Fi, and it's kind of just a lo-fi keys made with more resonance and uh, some other cool tricks that I found. So here we go, it sounds something kind of like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and recreate this bad boy. So let's go to a new preset and let's take a look at our synth page here. So turn off the effects as per usual. Maybe we have something kind of like this. Just pretty close to what we have, the effects, if you kind of look at these here, it is a lot of stuff, but it's kind of just subtly enhancing it. Most of the sound itself is done within our engines. Okay, so what we need to do is for the utility engine, let's turn this off. The sample engine, let's turn that off as well. And then take a look at our analog. So again, I'll do a new preset. Okay, so let's go to our analog engine and kind of look at the oscillators that we're gonna be using. So really this first one here is gonna be a square. So let's change this to a square. Now the purpose of this specific square oscillator is to get a subtle more tonality out of our tone because the basis of this patch is gonna be built using noise. So this volume is gonna be at negative 24. So some kind of like that. It's a pretty low level and it kind of like I was saying, just adds to the sound, right? And then we have the white noise at full volume. So <laughs> that's gonna be the pretty much the core of this sound here. So now we're talking about resonance, right? So we're doing the same thing with the Matrix 12. So let's go to the Matrix 12. And to tune this, if you haven't watched the other videos, you can kind of bring in another oscillator and kind of play with the tuning. Actually, you know what? Let's just let's just do this here just, just so we kind of know. So let's bring up this square wave quite substantially. And we're on the matrix 12, so bring your resonance all the way up. And then once we start moving this, we kind of are starting to get an interesting tone. They're almost like a hollow kind of sound, especially with that square wave. Low pass 24, we gotta put our keyboard tracking all the way. And if we brought it, brought away our, our square wave, we kind of still get tones. It's kind of hard to tell. It's almost those like broken staticky sounds. Or the dial up sound, if anybody remembers what that sounds like. So what we need to do here is go to the cutoff and go 291 so we can tune this, right? So we can bring this up here. Maybe send this to another filter. And kind of find that tuning, right? So this is pretty close. So I'm just gonna go down to 291 like I did before, something like that bring our square back into our mix. So now that we're tuned, now that we're keyboard tracked, we can kind of bring this volume back down to negative 24. So we basically have this going on. So, okay, some kind of interesting. So now we should focus a little bit on our envelopes, right? We're gonna get back to our cutoff here in just a second because it's a little more than meets the eye to it. So. Basically, the first envelope is going to be one millisecond, right? Our attack and then our decay is going to be 300, which is going to be default. But our sustain is going to be quite low at 0.524. Because especially with this kind of sound, that, that static kind of gets a little bit too much. So we kind of want to bring the sustain down. Kind of get the peak of the sound, the tonality a little bit more. The release is 742. So something around here, 742. It already there kind of sounds kind of lo-fi-ish, right? Okay, so that's all we have to do for our amp envelope. We are doing something interesting that we did earlier on in the week with our cutoff here. So we want to give it a little bit of vibrato, right? And that's what we're going to be seeing here. So if we take a look at our first LFO, this is going to be poly keyboard, the retrigger source. Actually, I think, uh, yeah, that could be fine. We can go free running. It really doesn't matter too much, I suppose. But you'll see why here. So. Our first uh, LFO, let's change this to 670, which is kind of appropriate for vibrato. And there we go. So now let's drag and drop this onto our cutoff because if we're doing sounds like this, right, doing vibrato, we need to modulate the cutoff as opposed to a certain pitch, right? Because noise isn't necessarily pitched. Now this is a lot, right? 
<laughs> it kind of breaks our patch. So basically, if you look here on our modulation amount, it's going to be 0 0.01. So pretty much the lowest we can really get here is so 0 0.01. And that's still kind of a lot. So what I'd like to do as well is go into the LFO, sidechain this bad boy to the mod wheel. And then this value that comes on default at 0 0.50. Click and drag it all the way to one. So now once we exit this window, we can go to our keyboard. We start modulation here, our modulation wheel. Now we can basically bring this all the way down. We're not going to have any modulation or vibrato until we bring it up. So there's that whole thing. So... A little couple things to do here. If we look at this LFO, we have a fade in at 1.14 seconds because we don't want that instantly starting. Mm -hmm. So fade this in here at 141 seconds. So it's a little bit more organic. So see how close we are to the other one. But here especially, so take a listen to this here. What we also need to do is what I kind of did here as well is kind of sent this filter, right? So filter one's going to output to the filter two. And I'm using the surgeon filter to kind of just chop off a lot of the extra top end that we kind of don't really want too much. So if we turn this on, go from multi mode to surgeon, and we're going to be fine on the low pass. Now let's bring our cutoff down to 6609. Something kind of like that keeps it a little bit more in check. And since this first filter is going into the second one, we're going to be using this pan for a little bit of random modulation like we did earlier on in the week. So this amount is going to be at 2.25. So random one, bring this on the pan. And that's kind of default. So let's go from touring to sample and hold. And then legato to mono keyboard or poly keyboard. And we didn't do any of the curving here. We can do that, right? So basically what's happening here is every note that we hit is kind of going into the left speaker, the right speaker. It's never exactly in the same spot every single time. We can do some fade in so it doesn't move so harshly. But I mean, that's really up to you. You'd have to just lock this and bring that up. But yeah, I thought I'd mention that just in case while we're here. Okay. Yeah, okay, we're in a pretty good spot here. So next up, we're going to be using, using the utility engine. We'll get to the second one because that one kind of happened last. So utility engine. So let's take a look at this. Let's turn this first noise on. Now, this one is going to be this wood transient. So if we go down to the transient section and we click on wood, it's going to be this guy. So if we turn this on here. Now, I didn't necessarily modulate in motion for this, for this sound because it's a quick sound. It's there and it's gone. Right. So this is going to be a macro one and this is called transient. So if we bring this volume all the way down and then go to 0.56, bring it down and drag and drop to 0.56, you're going to see why in a minute here. So this is going to be called transient. Okay. So the point of this guy is to kind of give us a little bit of click sound to the keys. And if you see on this filter here, we're going to filter two because we don't really want to shave off this much. We want to just go to this like that. So that like click sound, right? It's kind of nice when it's subtly mixed in there. So right now it's going to be at seven to five, six. And I kind of left a good amount there. If you want to go overboard on it, kind of like giving you a little bit more than less. Kind of makes it sound almost more like a keyboard or like some old or, you know, I think it's definitely a cool effect there. Okay, so next up is going to be this oscillator here, right? So this is going to be going direct out, and we're going to be doing a sub thing again. So this value is going to be 75. So turn this one on, bring the volume all the way down from filter to direct out, and then grab macro 3, drag and drop to a value of 0.75, and then relabel this as sub. And here we have a value of about almost half, so 4.8. Like playing a major key a little something that sounds a little happier there okay so we're pretty close here all right so now we need to go to the second sample engine and this one was kind of almost an afterthought but i think it felt kind of good so i turned this on and i just left it on this one here i was like this is actually kind of cool because it's kind of a key that starts off as a piano and a little bit of support would be kind of cool so this is going to filter two 
and then we're going to be going the volume at negative 12.1. So it's kind of there just to support what's already going on. Yeah, okay, a lot of fun for this guy. So we're pretty much in the ballpark as far as our engines go. So now we go into the effects. Now this is kind of cool here. So let's go to the effects section. Now let's turn off FXB and take a look at A. So we have a multi-filter going into a chorus, going into a compressor. So that low end, I didn't really want because again, we have that sub to kind of do that for us, right? A clean sub, which is kind of nice. So we're going to go to the multi-filter for the very first one. And we're going to be going for a high pass. Oops, high pass. I went, <laughs> went bad pass. So high pass at 36, so the steepest slope we can get, and the cutoff's gonna be at 145. Trying to give the sound a little bit clean, right? And then we go into a chorus, which kind of makes it a little bit nicer, right? So let's go to a chorus. And I don't believe we changed much on this chorus here. So yeah, I think mo for the most part, most of this is gonna be default, but we don't really need that much dry wet, and it's also on a macro, so at 0.17. So bring this dry wet all the way down. Our fourth macro, let's drag and drop this here and go to 0.17, that's fine, and relabel macro four as effects. And then turn it up. Now the chorus is very subtle, right? Gonna help stereoize it just a little bit more. Okay, next up we have a compressor. And this guy is really just kind of subtly there, right? It's not too crazy. The ratio is two to one. So it's a very, very, very gentle compressor. So we don't really need to change the ratio, just a little bit of our threshold, right? Kind of like that. Nothing too crazy. And then we're gonna boost our output gain by about almost four deeps. Next up, now we're gonna be going into the time step, right? So delay and reverb. So let's turn this on and turn the reverb off and the second delay off. So this first one's going to be one over eight dotted. So let's go here, one over eight dotted. And then we're going ping pong as well. So these two delays are gonna be on their separate macros, I believe, yes, on macro two. So what we can do is this one is gonna be at 0 0.20. So bring this down all the way, macro two, drag and drop and bring this down to 0 0.20. Bring that up and relabels this as delays. Because we're using two. And then, yeah, so our high pass is 73. And then our low pass is gonna be about 1,163. Okay, next up we have a next delay here and this one is going to be one over four straight time. So did we change this one over eight? Yes, we did, okay. So this one's good and also ping pong for this guy. And we can do a little bit of fine tuning to the right. What do we do here? 0 0.086, oh, a little too much, 0 0.086, something like that. Feedback, 352, I think it's default. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so now we need to do 108 for the high pass. And then low pass, what do we have here? About 2226. Okay, that's, that's about close enough. And then for our dry wet amount, we're doing 34. So bring this down. And then remember, this is going to be a macro two, right? For a delay. So drag and drop. And then what do we do again here? 0.34. There we go. And then last but not least is going to be this reverb. So let's go ahead and turn on our reverb. And these settings are a little bit different, right? So our pre-delay is at max at 200 milliseconds, so quite a lot. And it's I think this reverb is going to be on macro 4, right? So yeah, macro 4 at 0.38. Bring this down, drag and drop, and then it's going to be on 0.38, something like that. And then our size is a little bit bigger here, 1.12. And then our decay is also a little bit bigger, 504. Not by too much, though. 
And then our high pass, I believe that's default 200. Yep. And then we did change this to 3,045. 3,045, that's cool. I think our damping is the same as well. Yes. Okay. That's pretty much it here. And let's see how this sounds in comparison. Yeah, that's pretty much it there. Yeah, very cool patch to pay, play. It's very ambient, very mystical, lo-fi-y kind of sound. So yeah, that's how you make that patch. If you would like to get a copy of that for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.